The Pacific Island nation of Solomon Islands is preparing for a high-stakes election tomorrow, an election that will decide the fate of Prime Minister Manasa Sogavara, who has tied his fortunes very firmly to China. Stephen Jejitz is on the ground in Honiara. Well, Beverly, it's been very subdued in Honiara today. Now, that's not surprising because, as you mentioned, this blackout has been enforced today. It's in stark contrast to the streets of Honiara yesterday when you had these massive election floats on trucks essentially going down the main street of on Honiara. People bedecked in the party or candidate colours all yelling out excitedly. It was a very good-natured affair, incidentally. Occasionally, different buses from different political parties or for different candidates would cross paths and there was a bit of good natured uh, good natured uh, jostling between the two but nothing physical we're talking verbal jousting only here uh, what you really got a sense for I think uh, was a it was a sense of a town that was excited about an election and really glorying at least to a degree in uh, the capacity that they've all got here to, to cast a vote for their the candidate of choice but today yes the scene is much quieter and a bit more subdued ahead of the uh, the big day tomorrow of course, uh, the Prime Minister, Manase Sogavare, has uh, staked a lot on this election. Uh, who, where is he going to get competition from? What are the chances of him getting another term? Well, look, it's really difficult to predict, Beverly. There's no doubt that Manasseh Sogavare probably starts in a stronger position than many of his potential rivals uh, simply because of the fact that uh, he's already an incumbent and he's got a large number of MPs who are notionally on his side. Now, it is rem rem worth remembering, he first has to win his seat, his own constituency um, in, in Choisel. Now, he's probably favoured to do that. He's won it handily before. But he is facing a particularly stiff challenge, potentially, this time around, from the son of the man that uh, he actually deposed uh, many years ago. So, uh, look, I think he's still likely to win, but it's worth just keeping a bit of a close eye on that over the, the coming days and, and weeks. But if he is successful, then, of course, it comes down to who can form a coalition of 26. Now, Mr Sogavare, with all of these incumbent MPs who are standing for, for re-election notionally in his corner, he's probably in a relatively strong position because of that. Many of those, if they are elected, are likely to back him, but there are also there is also the possibility of defections, and if that happens, particularly if it's a relatively underwhelming showing from Mr. Sokovare's party, say he, he ends up with only 15 or 17 seats or so, um, then it is possible that people inside his own party, uh, as well as some of those other independents or opposition MPs who uh, who manage to be successful, it is possible they start to look perhaps for a, a compromise candidate, uh, potentially even one of Mr. Sokovare's own lieutenants, like uh, the foreign minister, Jeremiah Manele, uh, or perhaps a, a, a re-emerging major player like uh, Gordon Darcy Lilo, the former prime minister, who's standing here in central Honiara and who is tipped to be successful. So there are, in brief, a whole lot of variables here, Beverly. Uh, yes, Mr Sokovare is in a strong position, but anything can happen in Solomon Islands politics. In fact, it probably will. Indeed. You know, in terms of the global interest in the region, uh, Sogavare has positioned himself very closely to China. How much is that going to be a factor, do you think, as this plays out? Yeah, that's right. This will be very, very closely watched, not just throughout the Pacific, but also in Australia and New Zealand, of course, as well as in, in China and the United States of America, uh, partly because Mr Sokovare has drawn so much attention with his very deliberate decision to draw much closer to China, to sign that deeply contentious security pact with Beijing, uh, and also, as we've seen recently, praising repeatedly China's political system uh, and complaining about democracy. Now, none of this means necessarily that if he does win that Solomon Islands is going to slide towards autocracy. Uh, there are probably too many checks and balances here in the system, both informal and formal, for that to happen. But there are some concerns uh, about his attitudes towards democracy. And if he's returned with a heavy majority, then human rights groups here say they are worried about some of those fundamental freedoms being eroded. Now, Mr Sogavare, for his point, his, for his part, he's been very keen to spruik the relationship with Beijing. He said repeatedly that it was a decision that puts Solomon Islands on the right side of history. He's pointed to the big investments that China has made, like the big stadium that it's built here for the Pacific Games last year, uh, as well as other major investments. And he says that it's going to bring enormous development benefits to Solomon Islands. Stephen, we'll watch with interest. Good to talk. Thanks so much. Thanks, Beverly. Appreciate it.